Hey everyone, welcome to another Genshin Impact video. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of weird math, namely trying to mathematically quantify constellations and show how useful each constellation is and also if they're actually worth getting. I'm going to try to make this kind of video for a few characters if this first video does decently. Now for this video, I'm going to focus on my favorite character and current strongest character in the game, Ganyu. Also because leaks say she's getting a rerun in patch 2.2, but they say that about every patch, so I'm not really sure. Anyways, with that said, let's get started. Now, before we actually dive into the constellations themselves, I need to explain how I'm going to quantify Ganyu's damage. In a previous video, the Bow Deepest video, I calculated a solo Ganyu's max damage, ignoring artifacts and weapons. I'm going to use that value to show a comparison as to just how useful these constellations actually are, barring all other external factors. The exact formula for a C0 Ganyu looks something like this. The C is the number of enemies in the charge shot AoE radius, the S is the number of enemies in the skill AoE, and the B is the number of enemies in the burst AoE. The B is squared because each icicle does have their own tiny AoE, and for each enemy directly next to another, they get hit by that same damage repeatedly. So total damage isn't the number of icicles multiplied by the damage percent, but by how many enemies there are getting hit total. Now plugging in Ganyu's various stats at level 70, she has 256 attack, a base 20% crowd damage bonus, a base 69.2% crit damage, and a base 5% crit rate, with her charge shots gaining an extra 20% crit rate from her passive. From this, we get two base equations, one for her charge shots, and one for her skill and burst. Now with all that out of the way, we can actually get into the actual constellations. Ganyu's first constellation is Dew Drinker, and it has a few bonuses attached to it. First, whenever an enemy takes damage from Ganyu's fully charged arrow, either from the initial hit or the AoE splash, the enemy's cry resistance is reduced additively by 15% for 6 seconds. Second, whenever Ganyu's fully charged arrow, again, either the initial hit or the AoE splash, hits an enemy, she regains 2 energy. Now, quantifying that first part is pretty easy. It's practically just a 15% damage increase additive to other resistance shred like Viridescent or Zhongli's shield, but otherwise multiplicative. The second part is much harder because energy is a really weird thing to quantify. Normally, I assume bursts are cast off cooldown to maximize damage, but that inherently assumes enough energy is being charged up to cast burst off cooldown, and for some characters or teams, that's just not possible. For my playstyle, I typically have enough energy to use Ganyu's burst off cooldown, but I do use a double animo team, so it's hard to really quantify this bonus. Effectively, I'm going to quantify this as a 12.5% damage boost, given that the average enemy has about 10% elemental resistance, and I'm going to put a tiny little plus there, since there is the energy bonus, but I just can't physically quantify this accurately for all teams. And for those who didn't watch my damage calculation video, resistance shred is halved when the total resistance value of the enemy goes below zero, so a 15% resistance shred only equates to a 12.5% damage boost against enemies with 10% resistance. Therefore, this changes our damage equation for Ganyu to this. You just stick a little 1.125 at the very end of the equation. As a result, Ganyu's damage against a cluster of 5 enemies, which is just 5 enemies tightly packed together, will deal 8689.07 damage per second. Now, if you watched my Bow DPS video, you'll know Ganyu's DPS without constellations is 7723.62. So, from 0 constellations to the first constellation, Ganyu gains exactly 12.5% damage, as the equation would indicate. Keep in mind that this value can and will fluctuate depending on the resistance values of the enemy being faced. The second constellation is the Auspicious. This constellation increases the number of charges that Ganyu's skill has. Now, there's a bit of utility here, but due to the fact that I don't have these constellations, I don't actually know how this constellation works. However, based on how other charge-based constellations work, I doubt that Gan uses any different. With this in mind, I assume that this extra charge does not, in fact, have its own cooldown. This means that this, in terms of damage, only adds one extra use of Ganyu's skill into her attack rotation, which adds a total extra 370% damage. Now, this does take into account some assumptions, but there, I, uh, my original formula had a bit of leeway. Now, the reason for only adding one extra use of Ganyu's skill into her attack rotation is because if you look at our damage formula, you'll see that all it does is change the skill uses from a 3 to a 4. Overall, this is an increase of 2.5% damage against a cluster of 5 enemies, which is actually surprisingly low. 
And this in turn is because Ganyu will deal at best, of course, the 8689.07 DPS with only her Constellation 1. And after factoring the additional skill use from Ganyu's Constellation 2, the total DPS comes out to 8909.56 DPS. If you divide the DPS of Ganyu at C2 by the DPS of Ganyu at C1, it gives us 1.025 or 102.5%, hence the 2.5% damage increase. If you compare to C0 Ganyu though, this is an increase overall of 15% damage. Moving on to Ganyu's Constellation 3, Cloud Strider, we get an increase in our burst level by 3. This is pretty simple, we just use the talent level 9 of her burst instead of the talent level 6, which means she now deals 119% damage per icicle. Since we assume that every enemy will be struck by about 10 icicles, especially in a 5 enemy cluster, this bumps up the total damage percent up to 1,190%, thus altering our equation to this. Against the ideal cluster of 5 enemies, this will deal 10,161.02 DPS total. Compared to C2 Ganyu, this is a 14.05% damage increase, and compared to C0 Ganyu, it's a 31.56% damage increase. So overall, it's just a solid stat boost for a constellation, it doesn't really change the gameplay or anything. Ganyu's Constellation 4 is Westward Sojourn, and it has a very nifty ability. Enemies within Ganyu's burst AoE will receive 5% extra damage, and an extra 5% will be added every 3 seconds, up to a max of 25% extra damage. See, what's useful about this ability is that it doesn't stack with anything else. At least I don't think so. It's just a straight damage multiplier, and it isn't constrained by the damage type. Now, only because the way that I set up the assumptions is this easy to quantify. As it stands right now, we're assuming that the burst is cast off cooldown, which is to say that the moment the burst goes off cooldown, it's immediately used again. However, Ganyu's burst has a cooldown of 15 seconds, and a duration of 15 seconds. As a result, with Constellation 4, Ganyu will maintain that 25% damage multiplier consistently after the initial first 15 seconds. Luckily, we have some mathematical concepts to make things easier for us. Instead of calculating the damage increase per stage of the damage boost being applied, for example, calculating the damage done every 3 seconds, we just have to take the average damage boost over the time period, which is to say, 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25, divided by that 30 second time period that I use. As a result, the damage boost will be an average of 20% over the 30 second period that I normally use to calculate Ganyu's DPS. Therefore, the formula now looks like this. As you can see, it just has that times 1.2. The damage dealt here will be equal to 12,193.22 DPS, which is, as the formula suggests, 20% more than C3 Ganyu and 57.87% more damage than C0 Ganyu. This is a very powerful constellation and one of the best that Ganyu can get, whether you're using her for support or main DPS. I do also want to mention that the longer a combat goes for, the more useful this constellation becomes because you get to maintain that 25% damage boost for longer. This particular equation only covers the first 30 seconds. Now, Ganyu's Constellation 5, the Merciful, increases her skills talent by 3. Again, it's another straight stat boost. As with her Constellation 3, all we have to do is alter the formula accordingly. This increases Ganyu's DPS to 12,416.34, and compared to C4, this is only a 1.83% damage increase, but compared to C0, this is a 60.76% damage increase. Finally, Ganyu's Constellation 6, the Clement, causes Ganyu's next charge shot to take zero charge time after using her skill. This is actually surprisingly easy to quantify. Since the skill can be used four times in 30 seconds, we just add four total charge shots into the formula if we assume it's used perfectly and takes up approximately zero seconds to execute. So we get this equation. Therefore, the final damage dealt at Constellation 6 is 13,521.59 DPS. This adds 8.9% damage over C5, and 75.07% damage over C0. Now that we've got all the math out of the way, let's actually tabulate this data. So here at the compilation stage, let's put all the data into one nice table. At C0, Ganyu deals 7723.62 DPS, and there's no data to compare to here. At C1, Ganyu deals 8689.07 DPS, which is 12.5% damage more than C0. At C2, Ganyu deals 8,909.56 DPS, which is 2.5% damage more than C1, and 15% damage more than C0. C3, Ganyu deals 10,161.02 DPS, 
It's a 14.05% damage more than C2 and 31.56% damage more than Z0. At Z4, Ganyu deals 12,193.22 DPS, which is 20% damage more than C3 and 57.87% damage more than C0. At C5, she deals 12,416.34 DPS, it's a 1.83 damage percent increase over C4, and it's a 60.76% damage increase over C0. And finally, at C6, Ganyu deals 13,521.59 DPS, which is 8.9% damage more than C5, and a total 75.07% damage more than C0. Looking at this neat table that I just sped through, we see that the difference in damage between each constellation is not equal to the difference in damage when compared to C0, and that's because many of these boosts are multiplicative with the previous. This is normal and is based on the principle of diminishing returns. In any case, the table shows us that each constellation does add a significant amount of damage when compared to C0, but the best constellation is actually C4, since the total damage boost percent per constellation at this level is 14.47, which is higher than any of the other constellations. But this data is pretty useless alone. There needs to be something to compare this to. So the first thing we have to do in this vein is to attribute a cost to each of these constellations. According to some math done by Redditor U. Ethels, the average number of rolls to get a 5 star is actually 64. So if you find that your at rolls aren't averaging 64, tough luck. However, we also have to consider the 50 50 pity. Taking the average of 64 rolls or 128 rolls, so 10,240 Primo Gems at the low end and 20,480 Primo Gems at the high end, we get about 15,360 Primo Gems required to get a banner up character or their constellation. Now that we've determined the price of each constellation, we need to figure out if it's actually worth it. Therefore, we need to find a suitable replacement that would boost Ganyu's damage, which I'll consider her best in slot weapon, the Amos Bow. Based on rudimentary calculations, when Amos Bow is on banner, there's a 37.5% chance that you get it on any 5 star roll. Since the weapon banner has soft pity at about 65, we're going to assume you need only about 68 rolls based upon some data gathered by the internet to get a 5 star. And due to the way the weapon banner works and epitomized path, it will take around at most 33,600 Primo Gems to get a copy of the Amos Bow. However, we also have to account for the chance of getting the Amos Bow on any of the first two 5 stars on the weapon banner. 37.5% of all players will receive an Amos Bow on the first 5 star, Another 23.44% will receive an Amos Bow on the second 5 star, and the other 39% will receive Amos Bow on the third 5 star. Taking the averages of this gives us an average of 21,910 Primo Gems per Amos Bow. So at this stage, we're going to have to quantify just how big of a damage boost each Amos Bow gives us. The Amos Bow has a base attack of 457 at level 70, with a bonus 40.9% attack bonus secondary stat. It also increases the damage of charge attacks by 12% and another additional 24% due to Ganyu's interactions with this particular bow. Plugging this into C0 Ganyu's damage equation, we get this nice formula, but now with a number, the 1004.612 effective attack stat. This grants us a total DPS of 32,598.66. Now this is a massive damage boost compared to the DPS map we did earlier, but remember we were using weaponless Ganyu damage, so we need to compare this value against the Ganyu with like a 4-star bow, say the Hamayumi. With the Hamayumi, Ganyu gains 347 attack and an additional 45.4% attack bonus from the secondary stat, as well as a 12% damage bonus to her charge attack, giving us 876.762 for the average attack value. This results in 27,118.18 DPS. Comparing the Amos Bow to Hamayumi shows that the Amos Bow is a decent 20% damage increase over the Hamayumi. With this in mind, it's not quite worth it to roll for Ganyu Constellations if you don't have Amos Bow. To match that 20% damage increase, you would need at least C3. However, the damage increase per Primo Gem from Amos Bow is a nice 0.000913%, or just 0.146% damage increase per Wish. Compare that to Ganyu C4, which is her highest damage increase per constellation, which is a 0.00094% per Primogem, or 0.15% increase per Wish, which is slightly more than getting Amos Bow, but with a much higher level of investment required, since Amos Bow only requires, at the very most, 240 Wishes, while C4 Ganyu will take roughly 384 Wishes, or on the lower end, 256 Wishes, assuming that you beat the 50-50 every time on the 64th roll. That 16 wish difference between the highest for Amos Bow and the lowest for Ganyu 
for less pre bonus per premium gem just makes trying to get Ganyu Constellations not quite as efficient when compared to Amos Bow. Not to mention, you will get two other 5-star weapons, which can be used on your support or other DPS units, which will boost your Ganyu's damage, or just overall lower stuff like Abyss times, depending on the weapon and your team. Sometimes you get unlucky. Now, to be fair though, this isn't including artifacts. As you start getting attack stats on your artifacts, the damage granted by the weapon will diminish since extra attack stats stack additively with weapons while constellations tend to stack more multiplicatively. However, Amos Bow will still be the better option, just not as great of an option as I've stated here because of how attack percent stats interact with base attack stat granted by weapons. Well, at least Amos Bow would be the best if you technically have disposable Prima Gems. See, this is where things get weird. The problem is that the weapon banner is unforgiving. There are more than enough accounts of players who were unable to get the weapon they wanted from the banner, mostly because there's only a 75% chance to get a banner up weapon, and that in of itself is split in half. So there's a very distinct possibility, exactly 39%, that you actually fail the two 5-star rolls and have to rely on the third roll. Simply speaking, the odds are not in your favor to get Amos Bow before the third 5-star of the weapon banner. At the same time, Ganyu's Constellation 1 isn't that bad, especially in regards to damage boost per primo, which is a cozy 0.00081% per primo, or 0.13% per wish. It's only just a tiny bit less efficient than the Amos Bow, but it only requires 96 wishes roughly, versus the approximate 137 wishes needed for Amos Bow. Ultimately, my conclusion is that you shouldn't roll for Ganyu Constellations if you can afford getting Amos Bow. If you only have enough Primos and Fates to get one Constellation or one half or one weapon, I'd say go for the Constellation because you're not going to be able to afford an Amos Bow likely, and we don't know how long until Ganyu or Amos Bow is rerun again. So if you only have enough Primos for, say, I don't know, like a hundred wishes, it's better to roll for Constellations since you have at least a 50% chance of winning that versus the meager 37.5% chance of getting an Amos Bow within that 100 rolls. The rest of that 62.5% chance would be literally any other weapon, some of which might be entirely useless to you. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, or otherwise learned something from it. If you haven't already, now is a really good time to hit the subscribe button. It automatically deposits dopamine into my system, and I'm starting to have withdrawal symptoms. So if you could just, you know, hit the subscribe real quick, that'd be pretty nice. Also, I'm an infrequent uploader, if you haven't known. and <laughs> I have a lot of stuff to do, and a lot of it is not very kind to me or my schedule. So make sure you ring that bell. I'm not actually sure if it makes a ding sound or not. I've never actually clicked it before. But you should do it. As an experiment. For science. Anyways, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.